Well, I started cleaning out this channel here and uh, found a little bit more work than uh, I had expected. So let me show you. I got a walled in a little metal in there too. So that'll add another day or two to the job, which really is no big deal at this point. So let me just uh, give you a little quick rundown of what I got to do. Some of these holes were pushed, pulled out from the bolts, especially this one and the, these two on the other side. This one's a little pulled out here, but not bad. But it's taking my screwdriver and scraping surface rust off. And yeah, it went through across there, there, and there, and a spot over here. And that's fairly heavy metal. And I have some thicker gauge like that. And I'm going to just cut out where it's all bad and weld in new and grind the welds out because you know the top it's uh, so that's got to be smooth and uh, you can see this bolt hole needs to be hammered back I've just been taking you know, a hammer and a punch and just going around the hole and pounding them back so that they're flush and I'll finish doing that and then I'll cut the rust out and and make some little pieces to weld in and get that taken care of. It'll probably be about the same amount of work to cut it out and weld it in than it would be to try and clean all that scaly rust off anyway. But when it's uh, weak enough to go through, um, yeah, it needs to be done. I'm going to take my body hammer and work it all over all the way around, see if there's any anymore. The rest of it, you know, the paint's on it, it looks pretty good. It was mostly from from there to there. Then I took my angle grinder and just jammed it in there and really ground out hardcore what was soft. So everything that's bad is out and what's left is fairly solid. So I'm gonna fit some metal in there and weld it in. I gotta clean this up to weld to and uh, there's a nice lip up here to weld to that's good and solid. So that should be fairly easy repair, I hope. And uh, anyway, I gotta get something and clean this up so I can weld to it. It's all welded up now. I don't mind making the sheet metal panels and welding them in. It's the grinding the welds out that's no fun. And... Uh, it needs to be ground out, so I'm going to get to it. Alright, it's all welded up. There's a little spot there, too. <laughs> and uh, I went around and checked everything, beat the heck out of everything with a hammer. And it all looks pretty darn good. I think I'm just going to put a little coat of mar glass or dir glass, or whatever you call that stuff, just so if there's any cracks in the welds or anything, it seals, doesn't leak water into the trunk. A little uh, Dura glass or Mar glass or whatever you want to call it in on all the uh, welds, and I'll give that a sand out tomorrow. And I went around all these, so these are where the the top panel meets this panel, and then there's another. There's more panels back and behind there, but I think that's where the moisture got in between to get in there to rust things out. So I took that Mar glass. And like when you pack wheel bearings with your fingers, I kind of forced as much in the seam all the way around the whole top to help seal that joint. And I mean, I I packed it in just like I put a nitrile glove on and just went around and just worked it in the whole seam all the way around. So hopefully that'll seal it so water doesn't get in there and cause any future rust. You know, I mean... Cars, it's not going to, as long as I own it anyway, it's not going to sit out in the weather. And, you know, I rarely wash the cars. I, I dust them with a California car duster or I just take a bucket with a sponge and a chamois and wipe them down. But, you know, if they're driven in the rain and really dirty, then yeah, I'll get the hose out and wash them. And I'll probably have to get the hose out and wash this car when I'm done you know, when it's completely done, but, um, 
you know, it's probably going to get wet once every five years, you know, the way. So I, it's not going to rust out again. There's, it's just not going to happen. It's like I say, it's going to be garaged and, and uh, it should be fine. My etching primer came. So I did get, uh, that's the number. And that's what it is, the brand. So that's for the trunk pan once I get the trunk pan all cleaned up. Well, I sanded out the Duraglass and put a little uh, auto body filler just so it sands out smooth, you know, to try and prevent water leaks. And I've been sanding in the trunk. I really need to get the car outside. We've been having a few snow showers, but I got in here and sanded and cleaned that up a bit. And uh, I'm going to try and get that edge cleaned up and then just prime that edge so I can seal it. And then when I can get it outside, I'll sand all this out really good and get it ready to prime. I'll probably prime it. I don't know. We'll see when I prime it. I might prime it before or after I paint this because once uh, once this is sanded out, which will be later today, I can prime this and I can, I'm ready to start masking and painting the jams. And uh, So we'll see. I'm just taking it, you know, as I go. The top channel is ready for paint. There we go. So I'll probably start, I don't know, they're predicting not very nice weather the rest of the week, but maybe I can get it out and paint. But I'm going to need to get it out to finish sanding this. But uh, we'll just see how the weather plays and maybe I can get it masked off and get some green in the jams in the next few days. This video has been over a few days, so I don't know if I have video of this under here or not. But anyway, that's the underside of that. Over the time, I've had a few questions on the engine. Um, it is a... 352. I think the 352's last year was 66. I think 67 they're all 390. I think they did the last year the 352 and the last year the 410 was 66. It's an FE engine. FE stands for Ford Edsel. I believe the engine was made in Dearborn. Some of the Edsel, I think the early Edsel E475's were made in the Cleveland engine plant. Um, the engine is actually lighter by 50 or 60 pounds than the big block Chevy or the big block uh, Chrysler. And the reason why this engine has this intake manifold that stretches halfway into the head here was because when this engine was used on marine applications or in other applications, stationary engines or things other than the automobile, they'd put an aluminum intake and aluminum water pump on it, and the engine would be under 600 pounds. So, you know, even though it's a big block, it's still, you know, on a big intake, it's still lighter than most of the big blocks. This is the 250 horsepower version with the Autolite 4100 four barrel on it. I think this engine was made from, the FE engine was made from maybe 58 to 78, I'm, I'm guessing, somewhere around in that neck of the woods. I think 78 was the last year they made the, the FE block. It was used in, you know, medium duty trucks mostly by then. I think of all the FEs, the only one that was really different was the 427. It had threaded freeze plug holes where they'd thread in like a pipe plug or, you know, with a big like hex, hex wrench would fit. And they had bolts that went in the side of the block for the main bearing caps. It had, you know, the regular main bearing bolt caps, you know, bolts in the going in the way they do in most engines, but it had them coming in from the side also. That was only on the 427 engine. The early FE engines were, uh, I think they, they were... Um, 331.8 cubic inch. A lot of people just call them 332s, but they're 
actually 331.8. Um, so, you know, they've, they've been around a long time. Then there was the, they used this engine in light trucks and, and heavy duty truck, or I shouldn't say heavy duty, medium duty, school buses, stuff like that. I worked in the school bus garage, most of the buses. In fact, all of them had the 361. Some of the, there was some old GMCs and they had the 305 V6 in them, but most of them had the 361s with the two barrel or the four barrel. And uh, they weren't really, they were the FE, same FE block as this, but they were not called FE engines. I don't know if a lot of people realize that. They're actually FT in the, in the school buses and medium duty trucks and stuff. So just a little tidbit, you know, seeing this is going to be a short video, thought I'd just throw a little tidbit in on the engine that's in the car. That's it for this video. I'm going to call it a day. If you like my video, hit the like button. If you want to see this neat old galaxy done up, I mean, I'm going to try and get this painted up in the next few days. Subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.